Thank you very much for the kisses. Thank you for the kisses. I'm actually wondering if I should film from the other angle. Are we gonna move things around? No, look, there, there's the light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Hello. Hello, can you like get a toy? Because I want to film right now. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Are you gonna pick up the books and show them to the people? It's me, Jess. How's everybody doing? It's a little bit dark. Apologies for that. Maybe the sun will come through in just a minute. See, there we go. Beautiful. Let the light in. Right, Nola? Yes. Hi. So I'm sure I've just started filming and I'm sure I have <laughs> no doubt that there will be interruptions. Oh, the light is going to come in and out. I apologize for that in advance. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So here today, I'm here to just talk about books that I want to read in October. A TBR of sorts. A project. A couple book club and buddy reads. And that being said, I do want to read some books for spooky season. So I think I'm probably gonna film a separate uh, TBR and pile of possibilities for spooky season. That is the plan. Jump right into it. I just, can I just say though, I don't know if any of you follow me on Instagram, but I'm, I've recently become kind of obsessed with Hobonichi. And I just got this cute little uh, notebook. Look at the back. It's so cute. Uh, who is the illustrator of this? this? Yumi. Kita Kitagishi. This is Yumi Kitagishi is the uh, artist. And this is where I've been taking my notes. It has this cute little pattern on the bottom and you can just take your notes and then you can just tear the little paper out. It's so cute. This is not sponsored. So I have my little notes and now let's get into it. First things first, I joined two Patreons this past month. I joined Scott's Patreon from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, and I joined Eric Carl Anderson's Patreon from Eric Carl Anderson. I think his ch his channel is just titled his name. And both of them have started uh, book clubs. The book club pick for Scott's Patreon is Fresh Water for Flowers, and I'll leave everything linked in the description box below, by Valérie Perrin. And it's translated by Hildegard... Hildegrand Serral. I hope I'm saying that right. The description is, sounds really interesting. A cemetery caretaker is visited by a man wishing to scatter his mother's ashes on a random grave, which soon turns out to be the grave of her lover. Mother's love story links with the caretakers. It's supposed to be funny, happy, moving, and sad. I actually really am interested in reading it, so I hope I can get my hands on it. And then I, I have an older uh, copy of Virginia Woolf's The Waves, which is the choice for Eric Carl Anderson's uh, book club on his Patreon. And I've only read Orlando by Virginia Woolf, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. The Waves, it's supposed to be her, the pinnacle of her work. It's about six different characters, six childhood friends. It just says, Virginia Woolf found it possible to pack everything she had experienced of the grandeur and futility of life into this work. So I'm going in fairly blind, but I'm really looking forward to reading more Virginia Woolf, and this seems like a really convenient way to do that. So thank you so much for choosing this book for your Patreon, uh, Eric. And then so for my in-person, not in-person, because we meet over Zoom book club, we are reading The Fraud by Zadie Smith. I'm really excited for this as well. I've already started this book and it's, so far it's really interesting. It's set in 1873 and it's about Mrs. Eliza Touche. She is a housekeeper and is cousin by marriage of the once famous novelist now in decline William Ainsworth, with whom she's lived for 30 years. He has his friends with Charles Dickens. He is, she thinks he has no talent. And then there's also another character, Andrew Bogle, 
who grew up enslaved on the Hope Plantation in Jamaica, Bogle finds himself in London, star witness in the celebrated case of imposture. So it's about the Tichborne trial, and it's based on these real historical events. So the, the fraud revolves around the central uh, uh, trial, this really bizarre trial of a man claiming to be Sir Roger Tichborne, thought to have, who is thought to have been killed at sea and and to be heir to a substantial uh, fortune. The the trial itself is was very long and quite like outlandish, and people from all over the UK in the 1870s kind of got hooked on the this trial and the way that it unfolded. And this is told through the eyes of Eliza Touchette, this cousin to this well-known Victorian novelist. So it makes this connection between the Tichborne trial, or so the Tichborne family and Jamaica. And that connection is made through the character of Andrew Bogle, who is, I hope I'm saying that right, and it's not Andrew Bogle. Every time I see the word Bogle, B-O-G-L-E, I think of the game Bogle, but I think the game Bogle has two G's in it. But anyway, I digress. So Bogle is this kind of calm and earnest man, and he's very sincere. The connection is that as a formerly enslaved black man, he he's, he's in the trial, the claimant star witness, and this makes him a very captivating character. So... So far, it's good. I haven't read too, too much else about it, and I'm curious to see how I like it. Uh, and then Lori and I are going to be reading Black Butterflies. This was long listed for the Women's Prize this year, and I'm really excited to get to this. This is set in Sarajevo in the spring of 1992, after the Civil War has broken out, and it's about a woman who's a teacher. I think she's an art teacher. She decides to stay behind, sends her family to England. And I'm just, I've heard really good things about this, this book, and I'm, I'm really... I'm so excited to start this one. So those are my book club and buddy reads for the month. And then I also wanted to participate in Victober. I've never participated in Victober before. This is my, gonna be my first time participating in Victober. And I had on my classics list and have been wanting to read for quite some time, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. It's a bit of a chunker, <laughs> but I actually really, I loved Middlemarch so much and that video is coming that I think I'm really gonna like Elizabeth Gaskell. I haven't read anything of her before and yeah I'm, I'm just as excited to jump into this one. I think that the the female protagonist in this book is supposed to be quite memorable, Margaret Hale. It's about how she develop how she develops a sense of social justice through being in a turbulent relationship with the mill owner John Thornton. That's really all I know about it and I'm actually really excited to to read it. It's gonna, it's gonna be so good. I just know it's gonna be so good. So yeah, I'm not sure where I'm gonna start, but I think I'm gonna start these books in the first half, the book club books and the Victober book in the first half of the month. And then the second half of the month, I know that in the middle of the month, I have a bit of a break from teaching. We have sort of a half midterm break. So we have two or three days along with thanks Canadian Thanksgiving. I'm thinking about doing a reading vlog, which I've already talked about in my last video uh, for channel plans. Oh, maybe that wasn't my last video, but in my video for channel plans, I talked about this. And actually, really, it's, it's really shaped up for me to be something that I'm really looking forward to. So I started but then paused Camp Zero by Michelle Min Sterling. This is set in the future. So I'm doing a, a vlog on a dystopian vlog, reading a dystopian books for this vlog. I'm not sure what I'm going to do if I'm going to go. I was thinking about going apple picking. I have a couple of different ideas in mind. We'll see. Or maybe I'll just do something that's very home-based and do some baking. I'm really in the mood to bake, make pies and stews and cook. So it might be like a cooking, reading, vlog. I'm not really sure yet exactly how it's going to come out, which is always the fun part about making a vlog, but it's going to include Camp Zero by Michelle Min Sterling and The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty, which I picked up when I was in Maine this summer. So they're both very dystopian storylines. Camp Zero is set in America in 2049. Well, 
It's actually, I think, set in Canada because Camp Zero is in northern Canada. People, I think, are fleeing to this place called Camp Zero because it's a source of fresh, clean air and cool temperatures. When I first started reading it, it was giving me a little bit Handmaid's Tale because it was a group of women who had worked as hostesses in, in elite clubs in the city who were the focus of the story. I think they're told, that it's told from each of these different characters' perspective, plus a couple of other characters, like these women. And then the camp itself is owned by a billionaire, and we know that people had been implanted with something called a flick that had been removed from the main character, Rose, from the point where I started reading and I really only was 20 pages in where I put, before I hit pause. So I'm looking forward to that and then The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty. I was in a bookstore in Maine, a secondhand bookstore, and I was talking to the owner and talking about liking Emily St. John Mandel's book so much and he recommended this to me. It's a debut novel. It says, Set across one week and culminating in a shocking act of violence, the Rabbit Hutch chronicles a town on the brink, desperate for rebirth. How far will its residents, especially Blandine, go to achieve it? Does one person's gain always come to at another's expense? Escantis' The Rabbit Hutch is a gorgeous and provocative tale of loneliness and community, entrapment and freedom. So it's about... Four teenagers who have recently aged out of the state foster care system. The protagonist is a girl named Blandine. I mean, like, I know that this is dystopian. Well, I don't know what makes this dystopian. It doesn't even really say in the description. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not dystopian. I thought it was. He said it was dystopian. What? Do I have to look it up or are we just going to find out? I think we're just going to find out. <laughs> I think, it, I think it is. He said it was. He said it was disturbing. Uh, maybe he's, Maybe I confused disturbing with dystopian. Anyhow, this is, these are the books that I'm going to read for the reading block because I really, really want to read The Rabbit Hutch and it already started Camp Zero. So that's the plan for the middle of the month. It's going to be spooky season and I am so excited for spooky season. Whoa. I'm going to do a separate, I think, TBR or like pile of possibilities and recommendations for spooky season. I did a spooky season reading vlog last year at this time and it was really fun to do. I think I'm going to try to get to another Stephen Graham Jones book for spooky season and I'm thinking the only good Indians would be the one. It's a tale of revenge, cultural identity and the cost of breaking from dr tradition, seamlessly blending classic horror and a dramatic narrative with sharp social commentary. The Only Good Indians follows four American Indian men after a disturbing event from their youth puts them in a desperate struggle for their lives. Sounds amazing. And then the other one that I picked up and talked about in uh, my video about reading books for Women in Translation Month is Out by Natsu Carino. I've been wanting to read Out for so long and I found it in... Uh, Vermont in Burlington when I was coming back from Maine. Maybe I didn't talk about it in my Women in Translation video. Now I'm not sure if I did or not. Anyway, this is a translated book by a woman, <laughs> translated by Sneven Stephen Snyder. So it's actually translated by a man. Oh, that's interesting. It's the winner of Japan's Grand Prix for Crime Fiction. And I heard so much about this book over the last, over the years. The story of a brutal murder in the state Tokyo sub suburbs. As a young mother who works with who works the night shift making boxed lunches, strangles her abusive husband, and then seeks the help of her co-workers to dispose of the body and cover up her crime. Oh, it sounds so good. Okay, I'm really excited. <laughs> Woo it's going to be a really fun reading month. I have one last addition to my TBR. I'm really trying to make my th way through my wrapped TBR books so as to have made some progress there. And this time I pulled number 15. Don't know if you can see it there. But I don't know what it is. Oh, this is gonna be good too. Oh, 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 this is gonna be fun. Maybe I should add this to my, maybe I need to add this to my reading vlog. 
Terry Miles Rabbits. I think this this is about a video game. Like this is kind of futuristic and slightly dystopian as well. Rabbits is a mysterious alternate reality game so vast it uses the entire world as its canvas. Since the game started in 1959, 10 iterations have appeared and nine winners have been declared. The identities of these winners are unknown. So is their reward, which is rumored to include vast wealth, immortality, or perhaps even the key to the secrets of the universe. But the deeper you get, the more dangerous the game becomes. Players have died in the past and the body count is rising. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. I don't know if I should add that to my vlog. I might have to add this to my vlog. Oh boy, maybe. Maybe this will be the vlog. We shall see. Oh, that's so great. I was, I'm really happy I pulled that book. I didn't know what book I was gonna pull. I'm really happy I pulled that one. Oh, so good. So yes, very excited. Not sure if we'll get to everything, but definitely gonna film a vlog during that little break. And yeah, we're gonna try because the other ones are book club books, so I have to read those. Okay, I'm, I'm rambling now. Thanks everybody for watching. If you're new to the channel, hello, welcome, say hi in the comments below. Let me know what you're planning to read for October or what you're planning to read for spooky season. Let me know your favorite dystopian novel. Why don't you leave a rabbit in the comments below if you made it to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Huh? No, what are you doing? Don't bark at me. Just don't, okay? Could you not? Could you not bark at me, please? It's not very nice. It's not a very kind thing to do. <laughs> Lord, let's see if we can get some more light. light on the situation. Does that make any difference? Yeah, that made a difference a little bit. I don't want us to be in conflict. I want us to be friends. I know you won't pay attention. Look, I'm looking at you and I'm talking to you and you're not biting me anymore. As soon as I talk to the camera, you get mad. Why don't you just relax and enjoy the show? <laughs>